I know is so big. Welcome, Climate Viewers. My name is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News. Today is December 18th, 2014, and we are continuing our series on HARP, HARP 101. Search it on YouTube. And uh, you're going to see a whole lot of crazy stuff in these next series of videos. Our last video was on how HARP really works. Please check that out. Today, we are going to be covering uh, mind control. This is at climateviewer.com. Click on HARP table of contents on the sidebar or at the bottom of the page depending on your mobile and click on this so what's the deal with harp and controlling people's brains it doesn't control people's brains but it definitely affects it in a negative way and we're going to break that down in graphic detail electrical signals electrical interference electromagnetic radiation from outside your body can affect your mood because your brain works on electricity and hormones. Electrical signals produce hormones that affect your mood and everything else, your health, all of that. So external um, electrical signals, which are covered in detail on our EMF page, I suggest everybody go over there and look at uh, how cell phones, Wi-Fi, and even EMF and uh, can affect your brain and otherwise but let's save that for another video today we're talking about harp um, harp produces extremely low frequency waves elf waves are up up to 100 Hertz are once more naturally occurring but they can also be produced artificially such as Navy's project sanguine for submarine communications elf waves are not normally noticed by the unaided senses yet their resonant effect upon the human body has been connected to both physiological disorders and emotional distortion Infrasound vibration up to 20 hertz can subliminally influence brain activity to align itself to delta, theta, alpha, and beta wave patterns. Inclining an audience towards everything from alertness to passivity, infrasound could be used tactically as elf waves endure for great distances and it could be used in conjunction with media broadcasts as well. That's super creepy. What are they talking about? altering my brain and using elf waves with media broadcasts please look into that um so we're talking about very low frequency ranges uh from vlf to elf ulf and even lower now vlf facilities are all over the world um elf couple there's only like two of them that are really big and the ulf would be the ionosphere keters now do you do you, are you not inclined to believe me that this is messing with your brain? The Russian government would agree with me. And here's what they say. Under the high-frequency active auroral research program, the U.S. is creating a new integral geophysical weapon that may influence the near-Earth medium with high-frequency radio waves. State Duma said, The significance is a qualitative leap of this qualitative leap could be compared to the transition from cold steel to firearms or for conventional weapons to nuclear weapons we are now passing the nuclear age to the electromagnetic age directed energy weapons are all the rave space-based lasers uh, space-based microwave uh, anti-satellite uh, demolition systems rockets lasers you name it this is star wars people star wars uh, these conclusions were made by the Commission of the State's Duma International Affairs and Defense Community. The committee reports that the U.S. is planning to test three facilities of this kind. One of them is located on a military testing ground in Alaska, and its full-scale tests are to begin in early 2003. That would be HARP. The second one is in Greenland, and the third is in Norway. Greenland has a uh, ISCAT uh, at Sandstrom, and it has a AMISR. Um, up there, so I don't know which one they're referring to, and then Norway has Tromso's ionospheric heater. So those are the three they're talking about there. When these facilities are launched into space from Norway, Alaska, and Greenland, a closed contour will be created and a truly fantastic integral potential for influence in the near-Earth medium. A integral potential for influencing the near earth medium near earth being the troposphere where we live so they're saying that what they're doing the ionosphere is going to affect us down here on the ground the u.s plans to carry out large-scale scientific experiments under the heart program and not controlled by the global community will create weapons capable of breaking radio communication lines and equipment installed on spaceship and rockets provoke serious accidents in electrical networks and in oil and gas pipelines and 
have a negative impact on the mental health of people populating entire regions. They demanded that an international ban be put on such large-scale geophysical experiments. Geophysical, huh? Others are engaging even in an eco-type of terrorism whereby they can alter the climate, set off earthquakes, volcanoes remotely through the use of electromagnetic waves. Uh, Secretary of Defense William Combs stated that at the terrorism, weapons of mass destruction, and U.S. strategy policy, the SAM strategy at the Sam Nunn Policy Forum, April 28, 1997, before this came out. So both of these guys are talking about using the Earth electromagnetic waves as a weapon. This is the new paradigm. Forget about nuclear weapons, people. They're old. Um, and like I said, you know, we have all these mapped out over here. You can come see these, all of these facilities. These are VLF facilities, and I also have the HARP facilities up, such as, you know, HARP, Tromso, High Pass, Sura. You can just double click the icons over here to see them. Arecibo, the new array is down in the dome. The NM NMRF, there's another HARP. Super Darn at Jicamarca, Peru, and Shigaraki MU University. All these space-based weapons systems. Also scientific platforms, but we could argue about that all day long. I happen to know for a fact that they are involved in space-based weapons um, systems. So what's going on here? VLF facilities have been used for a very long time all around the world. You can see them here. I gave you a couple examples, and these are to communicate with... Uh, submarines mostly and uh before that what they they had this thing called project elf it was mentioned at the top of the article here project sanguine project seafarer um there's these two facilities one is in clam lake wisconsin the other is in republic michigan together the two of them as you can see in this chart right here uh they together produce an elf wave that is a one watt signal that can be heard worldwide um, they put a couple, uh, I think a million watts in and one watt out. And these cables are strewn all the way through the woods, <laughs> across county lines and all that in America. And you can see them here. Um, see the X right here is one and the F is the other. And if you come over to Climate Viewer 3D, those are also right here. So there's one, there's the other. You scroll in, you can see that here's the transmission building and the cables run along these long paths I'm a real dork for going and mapping this out in Google Earth but I wanted to know I wanted to see it for myself I saw the PDF I said let me go find the wires myself but yeah very big facility um, lots of uh, protesting going along with that people were cutting down the wires there's something called the Taos hum um, associated with that and it, it gets even weirder a 1971 navy study determined that electromagnetic fields associated with elf caused stunted growth in rats the military sat on these detail the details of these findings until 1976 even as concerned citizens worked to unearth information on potential health impacts of elf waves the navy convened an ad hoc committee for the review of biomedical and ecological effects of elf radiation to analyze their research in 1973 the committee's members raised concerns over potentially serious health problems related to the technology Though their worries carried little weight with militarists desiring a different message. Sound familiar? The ad hoc committee's findings only reached the public once Senator Gaylord Nelson, an environmentalist and progressive Democrat, raised a stink and released a report, the report himself. God bless him. So um, this facility allegedly was closed and they said the reason that they closed it was improvements in communications technology or changing and changing requirements of today's Navy made elf communication system no longer necessary Davis said all communications with submarines will now be done by 12 very low frequency transmitters located worldwide these VLF facilities worldwide as you can see here you come up here to awesome click on this and then you go here and you can go see them there's two antennas there you can scroll down come here VTX shaped like a diamond a couple of these short kind of shaped like the Star of David oddly enough um, this one's not on cam let's go over here to Harold Holt at this one and Harold Holt's a real well-known one as you can see here um, 
here I put these directly on top of each antenna pole. You can see the shadow coming from it there, so you know that I'm being accurate with this. And there's a picture associated with that that you can see. Here's the transmitter's front. It's shaped like a diamond or a star. So um, these facilities are what they're using now to speak with the uh, submarines. And what do we need uh, the HARP to create L4 if you've already got it covered? Well, anyway, um, there's another L facility. It's over in Russia, and it's actually just on this, this tower right here. And it says that it's actually 10 decibels more powerful than the U.S. Navy 76 hertz ELF transmission system. So they got this one tower. It's 10 decibels louder. That's uh, three times. I think three decibels is double the volume. So anyway, um, that's much louder. <laughs> and it doesn't cover multiple two states and you know several miles of cable. But regardless, uh, the Russians have one as well. It's called Zevs, and it's at too low a blast. Well, those are old school. This is all old school. Everything I showed you before, very old school. The new school is HARP and uh, these ionospheric heaters. And what they do is HARP produced 3.6 million watts with these diesel engines and some natural gas. And they turn it into electricity. They, they pump it into the sky. It becomes 5 billion watts, 5 gigawatts. Or as Doc Brown in uh, Back to the Future said, 1.21 gigawatts, which was a lightning bolt. So 1.21 gigawatts is a lightning bolt, and that's what they needed to travel through time and space, and HARP produces five of those, five gigawatts. Well, they're building an even bigger one over in Norway called IceCat 3D, and it's going to be 100 billion watts, 100 gigawatts. According to Bernard Eastland, John Hersher, and a whole bunch of other people, 100 gigawatts is what you need to modify the jet stream. So stay tuned for that. Regardless, um, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of argument about this 2.5 hertz signal coming from HARP on um, these low, extremely, extremely low frequency. They're actually not even in the ELF range. ELF is supposed to be three to three hundred hertz. These are below three hertz. So we're talking about magnetosonic, shear Alvin waves, emic waves, these sorts of things. These are these are terms you're probably not familiar with, but I just trying to Give these to the scientific guys out there that are interested. 2.5 hertz signal active. This is from Trond. Uh, it's a VLF website for radio guys. And this is what they say about it. Presumed but not verified as man-made signal. Detected at various locations worldwide. With amateur equipment, it is not easy to determine eventual frequency shifts. So signal is listed as a 2.5 hertz carrier. So far, the signal has not is not connected with any known geophysical events. Most likely not originating from HARP. Kakona, Alaska, and the U.S., they have little success with generation of ELF signals of re reasonable strength or anything than relative short distances. But, but, what is this? What is this? This says right here, HARP, ULF, amplitude, and this is the Demeter uh, satellite um, collecting it, HARP. And University of Maryland experiment, 2.5 hertz, off the chart. These are called shear Alvin waves. They spin and spiral out into space. Here's another one. Gakona Field. Harp, 2.5 hertz. Bing! And they got a little red circle on it. How about this? We've all seen these. 2.5 hertz, big red stripe. Everybody says, it's. oh, that's not harp. It is harp. We can prove that beyond a shadow of a doubt. They use a thing called ionospheric current drive to produce ULF from 0 to 70 hertz and polar electrojet modulation to produce ELF waves from 0 0.001 hertz to 20,000 20, hertz. Okay? And as you can see right here, X and O mode, 11 hertz, 29 hertz, 47 hertz, 73 hertz, full and half power, 0 0.2 hertz, 0.8 hertz, 1.4 hertz, 2.8 hertz. Sorry, I clicked that by accident. Um, 3.8 hertz and 6.4 hertz. That's harp making them that low. That's right. So there's no arguing about this anymore. And harp is producing these elf waves, these shear Alvin waves, emic waves, and magnetosonic waves, which do affect your health, your brain. And this stuff should be banned. 
So please, guys, uh, come over here watch Resonance Beings of Frequency. Great documentary on how electromagnetic radiation affects your body. And then uh, really dig into this stuff. Look at all of the heart facilities, the lar large high-powered radars of the world, and uh, do it while you can because Google is closing my Google Earth program um, by the end of the year. So this won't be around long. We'll try to invent something better to still bring all of this 3D fun to you. But uh, until then, check it out. Um, all the references are there. Harp, Elf Waves, and Mind Control, or Mind Aggravation, you might want to put it. Um, this is all referenced at the bottom. Please check it out. 1,778 other people already have. And I really hope that you guys get this stuff out to everybody because we really need to know the truth about Harp, Ionospheric Eaters, and Elf Generation. By the way, the reason this all matters, they're going to show up on a boat near you very soon. I'll cover this in my next video about how they're using them on trucks with the microwave ionosphere reconfiguration ground-based emitter, which is basically a harp on a trailer. They're putting them on boats to melt methane clouds to generate sunshine reflecting noctilucent clouds in increasing amounts in the mesosphere, which reflects sun's energy back into space. That's right, using harp to attack atmospheric methane. Very crazy. And they want to use the other heaters as well to do geoengineering with Project Lucy and the sky with diamonds. Compressing methane into diamond dust. And the straw man high frequency array, how they are putting them along the equator, along this green band, and the optimal elf region, which is right here. So look for an elf boat coming to a ocean near you. They are called the straw man high frequency array and that's why Harp is no longer necessary, not just because they have VLF facilities everywhere to talk. So there's a lot left to cover. I'm going to continue this series. We'll go through each one of my articles until we all get to the bottom of this. And then I'm going to probably stop talking about Harp until we see ISCAT 3D in 2016, hopefully. So with that, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not.